Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Taking a look at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see this low pressure spinning continuously over the Pacific Northwest. You can see we had a thunderstorm up there on the northern tip of Vancouver Island. More thunderstorm activity over the Okanagan Highlands this morning. This could continue on through this afternoon and even develop down on the eastern slopes of the Cascades a bit. Maybe a straight th storm through central Idaho down through the central Oregon Cascades as well. We'll take a look at that coming up here. And you can see the SPC shows that thunderstorm threat mainly cascades east. And this threat pushes off a bit to the east tomorrow, but maybe the Okanagan Highlands again. we got to watch out for some flooding up there with continued thunderstorm development. Day three, we re redevelop a trough off our coastline, so we might have some more thunderstorms, mainly cascades east, but we can't rule out a thunderstorm for the lowlands of western Washington, Oregon, even in such a scenario as we will have coming up here, which we'll look at in some detail. Looking at SeaTac yesterday, 58 degrees, a staggering 17 degrees below average. 75 is the average, and nowhere near the high temperature, the record high of 93, we, 92 we had in 2015. Now, taking a look at this, back in 1966, we had 55, 54, and 56 degrees on July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So I'm sure that had to do with an upper-level low parked over the region, similarly to what we're having now. I haven't looked at this uh, event specifically, but I imagine that would be the case. But that's a pretty uh, intense three-day stretch there, as you can see. So we did not set the all-time record low high yesterday. We did hit 58. Now looking at the hurry here, this kind of shows the timing of the thunderstorms moving through northeast Washington. Maybe a stray storm down through Oregon. Maybe some redevelopment this afternoon across the Okanagan Highlands. we got to watch out there. They're getting a lot of precip up there. It could get some flooding, even some flash flooding. Now, looking at winds for tonight, this is about the time of the fireworks shows. You see the European with north winds down through the Puget Sound, northwest through the Willamette Valley, but not very strong. So it's going to have a hard time clearing out that fireworks smoke. A little better winds eastern Washington, east slopes of the Cascades, Oregon, Washington coast, and the Strait of Juan de Fuca here. NAM showing similar wind speed values, a little more northerly down the Willamette Valley, though. Now, looking at what we're dealing with with this trough, you can see the one over us now, this cold air aloft. And we see some cold air still continue to spill out off our coastline here. That's going to keep that shower activity going for much of the region here as we go through the midweek. You can see it just kind of spinning off our coastline there. So that's what we're going to be watching coming up here next. But we should be warmer than what we have in the last few days here across Pacific Northwest. Now, looking at the European here, you can see as we go through the day today, that precip clears out, redevelops a bit over portions of extreme northern Idaho and northeast Washington down towards Oregon, east slopes of the Cascades. But then you'll see kind of clear out tonight. By the time the fireworks shows are going, most areas look like they're going to be fairly clear, but we will still have plenty of clouds around. Can't rule out a stray shower even for portions of western Washington, Oregon coast as well. So then as we go on in through Tuesday, you'll see we bring some of these showers up the Oregon Cascades into the Washington Cascades along the coastline too. Can't rule out a straight thunderstorm with that activity there on the day Tuesday, tomorrow. Wednesday, same thing, Cascades, Washington, Oregon up into BC. Can't rule out a thunderstorm with that activity also. Going to Thursday, you'll see we continue to do this at this troughing offshore here through the afternoon, especially look at British Columbia. Pretty good precipitation signal there. Now, as we go through Friday here, still we're going to do this again through BC and potential for a shower still across western Washington. So we'll take a look at some of the temperatures for the extended here coming up also uh, associated with this troughing. Now, looking at the European here, this kind of shows the thunderstorm activity today. And that, again, it kind of wanes as we go on through the evening hours tonight. So thunderstorms should be drastically reduced by the fireworks shows tonight across Washington, Oregon, Idaho. The Mother Nature's fireworks will be pushed off into Montana this evening. But looking at tomorrow, check this out. You can see a little bit of activity moving up the Cascades here. And even into southwest Washington, maybe even towards the Puget Sound over Lamette Valley. So, again, can't rule out a thunderstorm in through tomorrow. Looking at the general trough position, 18,000 feet, 500 millibars here. You can see the big trough over the area. It kind of loses its steam, but it redevelops off our shoreline there. That's going to bring that renewed shower activity across the region here as we go on in through midweek. So just wanted to show you guys that there. This is a little bit different look at the 500 millibar temperatures here. The other one we're looking at there was anomalies. You can uh, Those troughs are kind of unusual pressures for this time of year. This one just kind of shows the general position of that cooler air at 18,000 feet. And you can kind of see the winds associated with the trough now. 
And as we go through, you can see that trough redevelopment off our coastline here. That's what we're going to be dealing with coming up through this week here, bringing the shower activity across the area here. As we go on to the extended a little bit here, let me back up to the zero Z. I'm going to show this ridging that builds up across some of the southern portions of the USA. Look at some of this intense ridging going on here. And as we go on into our extended here too, look at the ridge that builds up all the way across the Northwest Territories into Northern Canada. Could bring some heat for the Pacific Northwest as we move into later next weekend towards early next week. So that's another thing we're going to be watching on into the extended could bring a few hot days here for portions of, of the Pacific Northwest. So that's next on tap after the trough. This is 850 millibars temperature anomaly. You can see it's very warm over Alaska, uh, Yukon, Northwest Territories, and portions of Northern BC at 850 millibars, 5,000 feet. And finally, the trough kicks through here, redevelops off our coastline here. It's still not very dynamic though. Now I want to go out a little bit further here on the European. Watch this warm up here. You can kind of see this ridging build all the way up towards the North Pole here, potentially bringing us some, some warmer temperatures off into the following next week. So this is still over a week out. So we're just going to watch it for now. We're not going to make any forecast temperatures off of this data just yet. This is 925 millibar temperatures here. And you can see we're pretty chilly now. This troughing is kind of hanging off of our coastline here. But as we go off into the extended a little bit here, watch some of these temperatures warm up as that ridging develops. You can really see the warm air moving all the way up into northern Canada here. As we go on in through Monday afternoon, this would be a week from now. But you can see the really warm temperatures aloft through the southwest, down through Texas and everything. So we're going to just kind of go ahead and watch that. That's the next weather maker or the next, uh, you know, the, the, the big weather story coming up after the troughing of this week. Mm -hmm. So looking at SeaTac, looks like the GFS has us not bad today. We might get into the mid 70s according to the GFS here. And you can see some pretty seasonable temperatures after that and it's kind of showing the signs of that heat as we go on through the extended there. So we're gonna watch that ridging build up here through the extended coming up. You can see the GFS for Spokane, chillier thunderstorm activity over there this morning, mainly north of Spokane, but you can't rule out a stray storm for them. And then warming back up a bit again, and then that heat signal off into the extended forecast. So yeah, watch out for the thunderstorms redeveloping, especially eastern portions, and we may even bring a thunderstorm threat for portions of western Washington, Oregon through the afternoon tomorrow or Wednesday. We'll continue to watch that. We'll look at some of the high-resolution models tomorrow morning, try to pinpoint those details. So hope you guys are having a good 4th of July, you know, and we'll go ahead and do this again tomorrow. Click like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys then.